Hey guys, it's Postbox Pat. Welcome back to How to Win Every Single Time in Chapter 4. We used to make these videos in the past and this method is not for pro players. So if you're a pro player, get out of here. But if you're a casual player like me and you want to get some more wins or a lot of that umbrella, this method is really going to help you guys out. If you play on console or anything like that, you know the graphics can't be changed at the minute. If you're on PC, you can lower your graphics to make it a little bit easier to see people. But other than that, on console, which most other players are who are casual players, probably won't be able to change their graphics and I personally am on PC and I'm going to keep my graphics max for the purpose of this video. So the technique is you don't jump out of the bus straight away. You mark where the bus is coming in and you mark where the bus is finishing. You stay inside of the bus. This is an old technique of mine. We'll explain how it works and how you can do it here in chapter four. You can do this on solos, duos, squads, zero build, normal builds. It's up to you what you want to do it on what game mode, but it helps a lot. So you stay in the bus and you let the bus kick you out. Now the second the bus kicks you out, you want to deploy your glider. Ignore the AFK players. You don't want to go for them and you want start gliding towards the center of the map now what this allows you to do is it allows you to skip the first storm phase so this is really going to help you guys out especially in zero build because your rotation isn't going to be as much you're going to skip the first storm and you're going to be able to land already in the circle which is super useful in zero build now this ain't going to work in competitive and i know that and many of you guys that play competitive could try this for the early stuff and it might work in competitive if you get a good drop on the very outskirt of the map but to be honest it's not going to work at high high competitive levels this is literally just for us casuals to get wins so now what do you do next well if you're new around here tap that subscribe but what do we actually do so this is what i do i glide towards the middle i stay in the air i've done this for years this technique and it works almost 90 percent of the time so i'm gliding in i'm looking at the map thinking where will players drop like i'm thinking on average, you look where the bus is. A lot of people jump at the start in casual games. So most players would have dropped there. And now we've got the circle form. We can continue to glide to the circle because we've not actually undeployed our glider. We've still got it deployed. And now we're ready not to skydive yet, but we're looking for a spot to land. So we could land over there at the Bastion, but then I think that's going to be quite a hot drop because that's where the bus kind of came in. A lot of players might go to there. So we're not going to land there. But then I'm looking around where else could we land. We've got a few other spots here on the very coast side, which are still in the circle. So if we go right on the edge of the map, then no, we know no players are going to be coming us to us from the sea, are they? Like, who's going to land in the sea? They're not going to find any loot. Unless they're coming by boat, it's very unlikely. So landing at the very edge of the map, if it's in the circle, it's going to give you the option to rotate in one direction only, and you know no one is going to be coming from behind you at any moment. So that's the way I play this. So we're going to be going right to the very edge of the circle, which has just been formed, to the edge. Now, it's in the, if it's in the center of the map, you're kind of doomed there. you just got to pick a spot. But usually it's not in the center of the map. The circle always kind of borders some area of the coast, usually. Not always, Though, but it usually does so moving in now we've got this location right here so we're already in the circle it's given us a huge advantage i've chosen this spot i've keep an eye out for players you got about a 400 meter render distance if you can see a player or not on max settings so if you don't see anyone when you're diving in you know it's a perfect spot i see that chest up there i know i can break that and now i land in i think it's time to start looting so i'm going to speed it up a little bit because the looting process takes a while let's speed it up so I've sped it up to two times the speed so I can just explain what's going on. Now when I go for loot, I look for on zero build, usually a rotation item, a heals, and then it's up to you if you want to take more heals or free weapons. So here what I'm doing is I'm just kind of getting my idea what we've got. We've got a few fishing spots. We can get a few of these if you want them as well. Stay behind cover, see what we can get from these. I thought, you know, I'll have a little go at fishing, see what I get from the first two. Didn't get much useful. I'll have one more go and I thought I'll leave it. Fishing's not really always the best way, but if there's not much loot in your area, it could be a good way to get a few weapons and a few healables. But here there's lots of slurp barrels, so I know there's already slurp barrels when I dived in, so I thought we'll stop fishing. We'll keep the fish just in case we need it and keep looting up. There's a big slurp truck there as well, which will take to get ourselves up to that max 100. So this is a really good spot. Now, inside of here, we're just looting, looking for an AR, a better AR, really, a better shotgun, and maybe another weapon if we can find it. And that's all I'm doing. And obviously, with these here, the upgrades you can get, these are usually something that I would just focus on what you've currently got for your loadout. There is, like kind of some good ones like the one where you heal in a bush is really good and there's a few really other good ones as well which you can get which you'll know if you play the game a lot like balloons can be quite good as well for rotation but most of it is really up to you what you want to pick on them it's all situational i don't really know what to suggest as long as you pick the right ones in the right situation you should be set to go so i'll keep going through them the arguments as we go through though and here we've got my rotation item. We've also got a rocket launcher. So we're pretty much loaded right now. We've got four weapons. We've got my three weapons.
weapons, rotational item, and also heals. So that's perfect, and that's all I'm doing here, just stacking up on heals, keeping my heals, making sure you've always got heals for zero builds. The best heals in zero build would probably be chug splashes. I've also hired the NPC. This is an option you can do as well. I'll demonstrate some of the plays you can make with the NPC in a minute. They can be used to distract people and be directed into different directions of players. So here, I'm picking the best one for me here. I noticed there wasn't any, so we re-rolled it. Again, we're not using a bow this time, so we're going to re-roll. I guess that first shot with the AR, if we do grab ourselves a scar at some point, it could come in quite handy. So we'll take that one. All right, let's keep moving in. And we'll rotate up to this hill up here and see what we can find weapon-wise up here. So as we begin to rotate up here, again, we're just going to be looting it. The NPC will teleport to you if they're set to follow mode. So make sure you do that, and they will teleport to you if they can't get to you. That's what I've done here. If you do hire an NPC, obviously, it's not always the best thing to do in like more of a competitive game but here we're having a casual fun game they can be really handy and sold to distract other players especially in zero build so here you can see i'm looking out for players just kind of chilling up here checking them out checking the storm always moving to the storm i see some guy on the motorbike i think you know what we've not really done much fighting yet we may as well get into some of the action and just take a little go on this guy now obviously if you're desperate for the win don't engage like i'm doing here i'm just having a little bit of fun and i thought i hit him once there but didn't really do too much damage to him and i thought you know what? we can probably push him nicely with this launch pad we should be able to take him out we've got a decent loadout we've got our hammer rotation we're going to send our npc in as well you can see i've directed the npc in and he's just on that rock to the left of me where he's parked his bike so i've got kind of a nice land on him and i'm pretty sure i can take him out i've got a rocket nice little shotgun really good rotation item and pretty much set here in my position to engage in him now unfortunately he moves behind the rock i actually don't know where he went but he's actually crouch walking up to me and that's something i want to mention visualize audio is a really good setting you want to put on because you can actually see where the player is but if they're crouched you can't so i couldn't actually see his walk so crouch is a really good option in casual games because a lot of people use this visualize audio but luckily i've got the rocket launcher hit him with that get a lovely amount of damage on him two shotgun shots on him and he's pretty much doomed there and then i'm pretty much set myself so i use these chug splashes to heal myself up from the damage these are the best heal items you can use especially when rotating they're the quickest to heal with obviously you can take others as well if you've got room but here in this game we're going with kind of like I guess three weapons rather than two heals. So I'm just going to go with the one heal because I guess Chug Splashes does both. So you can see we've locked and loaded. We're ready. We've got all our weapons loaded up again. Always reload after a fight if you can, if you're not ready to engage another one. And we're getting really lucky. Look at that. The circle's also continuing to end on us. And now we're having some difficulty with our NPC directing them. So we're going to keep directing them and get them over to us. So we've now taken the motorbike. Make sure we've reloaded all our weapons and we're set to go. We've obviously got our rotation with the bike and the hammer if need be. I'm going to try and get to the top of this mountain. High ground is always the best on zero build, and this mountain is absolutely huge, but it's quite hard to get up with the bike, and unfortunately, as I do get up here, there is actually another player up here, which is going to give me a huge disadvantage. You can see, I get up here, I'm thinking, I'm pretty safe here. I go over the cliff and actually slip down there. I wasn't expecting that, but, you know... That was just a little bit unlucky. So I'm still trying to fix my NPC. Definitely a little bit hard work. So I just set them to follow so I don't have to deal with them anymore. And we're trying to trap this guy with the glider. So I thought, he's actually bailed from the top. We could have probably stayed at the top, but I accidentally slipped down. It probably would have been better to stay at the top. But, you know, we may as well chase this guy down. He's rotating down there. He's already in a fight with someone else. Third partying is kind of toxic, but it is the way to go on zero build. Players can't really build, so you can really use the advantage of that and kind of maneuver yourself around and just get a really nice angle so here i'm actually going to send in the npc and he's going to go in and he's going to distract them so this is something you can do by hiring npcs and it's quite fun you know by directing npcs and stuff it creates a lot of fun in the game so i've rotated to a good spot i'm not going to rush in because going inside of here would be really bad right now but i'm just going to stay on the hill and just keep an eye out what's going on make sure nothing's going on behind me usually no one's really going to rotate to this spot so you're kind of safe behind you but if you do get shot i'm thinking if i do get shot behind me i'm going to switch to the hammer and head straight to the building if need be so i'm in a safe position i can see that player there's no point of shooting unless i've got direct shots on him he doesn't know i'm here right now yeah i go for a few shots i hit a nice little 48 there but then i missed the next one a little bit confused how i hit 48 and then he gets shield on top of that but yeah i don't know i can't actually figure out how much health he's on there i think it's just a bug or something but i'm now sending my npc over to where they are you can see i'm directing my npc and he's going in which is really going to help me out that guy's rotating i'm trying to hit him with my ar but missing the few shots so he's jumping and just dodging them dmr definitely feels a little bit weaker than it used to be but that's all right and there goes his npc actually we'll try and get some shots on him because obviously gonna have to clear him at some 
gun point it is quite crucial to actually clear the npc so you can see that npc rotating my npc goes in he's actually fighting their npc so it's kind of an npc battle right now and i'm moving in knowing that this player's here on me he fires a rocket and actually hits me with his rocket and i miss him my i do get a little bit of damage but not full damage in my rocket lucky enough i hit all my shotgun shots and with the new shotgun being buffed for those that don't know there's been some really interesting changes i actually take him out with the shotgun there but this shotgun here i was just using the uh, semi-auto one has actually been buffed a little bit and the other shotgun's also been buffed as well but it's more pull out time but it damage has actually been buffed on that shotgun i'm using so that's why i'm using that and the hammer's been nerfed and also the one that fires the swords has been nerfed i can't think of the name right now it's very new this season so i don't know all the names off by heart but yeah, the hammer's been nerfed on its cooldown for rotation and obviously the sword weapon has also been nerfed on its damage so i'd kind of stay away from that sword weapon at the minute it's cool to use and fun but i wouldn't really prioritize it unless you're playing squads or duos for a little bit of fun definitely on solo probably one that you want to avoid with the damage nerf it's not as powerful as it once was so yeah we're kind of in a position now with We've got some decent loot. We've got our heals. we got everything. I was thinking maybe go a double rocket. And then I realized double rocket is a really OP strat on zero build. But then I just realized how big the terrain was. So I thought to myself, like, the area that we're in is just no good. Like, using double rocket in this area is going to be really bad. Like, I'm looking and thinking, whoa, whoa, this is not good for double rocket. It needs to be more of a close quarter area to actually take advantage of the double rocket launcher. So I bounce back over and pick up my DMR just in case we need that for the range access. And we will swap that for a scar if I do find one. But right now, we're in a bad position. This is a horrible ending for the circle. But I'll give you guys some tips on what you can do. Always stay to the edge. When the storm's coming in, try and stay to that not going into the circle fully but just the edge of it ready to go in when you're ready head into the middle if you're on like a height thing like this you know that someone's going to be there in the middle i'm just going to pick this ammo one here for now what other ones have we got none of them are any good may as well re-roll that i guess go for a little re-roll yeah that's pretty cool jelly, jelly one's pretty cool but we'll re-roll we'll go for that uh, bloodhound one that's pretty good all right so like i was saying right now we're in a position that's pretty deadly like this is not good. It's not a good spot at all. We're on the bottom of a mountain, lots of height. I'm staying to the edge of the storm, trying to find areas which could be cover based. I'm moving my way up to these rocks up here. Knowing that someone's going to be around here at some point, I don't know where. Obviously, on top of the mountain, I'm going to get my NPC in a nice position there. And I can take the opportunity to take the mountain, which we're going to try at least once. But obviously, if this fails, you've got to have a backup plan. You can't always take the high ground in zero build easily without risking yourself. And obviously, this guy's got balloons, so I was thinking. This is risky. You can only get them from the perk system, the augments, whatever they're called. So, obviously, that's kind of bad. So, he's up here. I kind of got a sight on him. Unfortunately, he gets a lot of shots on me before I can even actually aim in with my DMR and does a ton of damage. So, I just decide to bail straight away, knowing that I've still got a little bit of heals to heal up. And there will be a few heals around here as well, around the area, which will come in handy. So, we're going to rotate over here, get my advantage behind this rock, and see if we can spot any heals or anything. See if I can get... Oh, he's actually shooting on me, but luckily, we're behind the rock, so it's all right. If this rock gets destroyed again, I'll be rotating out of here down to this left side, looking for heals as quickly as possible. So, I'm in a good spot kind of positioning myself keep an eye out got my npc who's engaging with him which is actually scaring him off so that's why i parked my npc there probably want to move my npc up the mountains i'm going to try and direct him up there but i just can't get it to work he's actually just stuck there my npc but i guess it's kind of a good position to scare him off from peeping over he probably thinks it's a player so i'm going to rotate over here i saw this little boar over here we can obviously eliminate this boar for some I guess if you need some heals, which is what I'm going to do here, I'm going to focus this boar for some heals, which we're going to do. I'm going to grab the meat, which is going to give us a little bit of HP, should get us back up to where we were at. And we can also use these slurp mushrooms as well to help us get a little bit of shield. So kind of a nice little one there, just very lucky to find that boar, but that come in really handy. So now we're doing all right. We've got decent health, not full, and we're in a good position. Obviously, I'm trying to direct my NPC. It looks like my NPC's actually been taken out now, so I no longer have the distraction material. But I'm keeping to the edge, like I was saying. I'm not going in my chance at going in failed and there's now players fighting on that hill so obviously i can't go in right now we're going to climb this hill over here and see what we've got and luckily one of these rifts actually spawn in with slurp barrels so that's going to give me 90 shield chances of this is so rare watch out you don't pick up the npc there obviously if you did that that would be really bad but here slurp here we go absolute amazing chances of this is rare a lot of xp as well from barrels so really nice little stuff here going on that's another thing i suggest as well when you're searching chests there's no point of breaking the floor you may as well just search it so you get the xp but if you are playing competitively obviously if you could break the item to search a chest that would be better anyway let's talk about rotating in watch out for the ice the ice is everywhere in this ice biome and it can be really slippy and really hard to maneuver so we're going to grab that 
AR, get that in our inventory, grab some rocket ammo here if we can get that, and we are set to rotate in. Okay. So now I've got my hammer fully charged. You can use that. We're actually getting shot at from down there. So we're going to rotate away from that. We only lost a little bit of HP there. 12 shield. Wait for our overshield to shield. And this guy's probably going to push us. We've got that guy up there. We've got this rock to use as our cover. We've still got a little bit of time before we need to move. So we'll keep our eye out. There's going to be a player rotating up. Here he comes. Let's see if we can hit him with the rocket. Oh, I just missed the rocket shot there. I was a little bit unlucky. He actually hits us a little bit there. Switch over to my shotgun. I get him on the downfall. Take him out. So now I need to bounce back in to get out of this storm. Nicely done. And we're back in. So we can actually use one of our minis here we've got another player up on the hill over there and it looks like if i reload my weapons which is really important to do that player is actually pushing the hill to see if there's anyone else up there so nicely done reloading my weapons there's another player approaching me on this left side over here let's switch back over to the shotgun get some shotgun shots off him nice another shotgun shot oh he's actually moved out a little bit so we're gonna crouch a little bit move out oh getting shot out from the sword the sword's actually oh where's that sword come from i have no idea where that come from that just dealt a ton of damage to us we have to rotate a little bit luckily with the new nerf that actually kept us alive there so we're all right we're gonna rotate in a little bit use these minis again over here in a nice position for the minis get ourselves rotating always using the cover to advantage even in this horrible storm with the mountain you know we've got a chance here to still move in there's five players remaining as long as we keep rotating and keeping our eyes clear of the path we know there's a guy up there but as long as he doesn't spot us he's got other people to worry about as well so we're now at the top of the hill and the player at the top has actually decided to use his glider and get down from here because there's a little kind of launch pad thing at the top. And now they're all fighting down there. That was a clear rocket shot, but I thought, you know, we can rotate down. He's actually decided to follow that player. Staying on the high ground as long as possible right now. If you've got the high ground, do not leave it at all costs, especially in this situation. You've got a good positioning. I can take a lot of cover behind these hills. I know that this is a really safe spot. Guy trying to shoot in at me there, but that's okay. We take advantage here. Another player's letting them fight, letting them fight. Obviously, three players remaining. This guy's rotating over with his hammer with a little bit of I'll fire in my rocket, reload my item there, nicely done, and actually aim in as quick as we can here, get as many shots as possible on this geezer, and actually managed to take him out there nicely with the scar. I reload my rocket, and now I'm in a position ready for the final fight. I can see the guy rotating on the right side. We'll stay behind this rock, we'll fire in our rocket, reload our rocket launcher if we can, then go in for a little shot with the rocket, try and hit him. We do miss, so we don't actually hit him with the rocket launcher, but luckily enough, the shotgun manages to finish him off, and we get that victory. You can do this in solo duels or squads, this method. Feel free to rewatch it, and I hope this does help you. Let me know in the comments if it gets you a win or gets you close in the top five. And eventually, if you keep trying it, you should get a win. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And this is Postbox Pat, standing out.